Good morning, church. What a blessing to be gathered here this morning in the house of God. We extend a welcome to all who are gathered here. I extend a welcome to all who are gathered here on behalf of all of Pilgrim Church here in the sanctuary and also those who are gathered with us on Zoom or Facebook Live. We are privileged, blessed, and highly favored to be in this place today at this time. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, the, the Sunday in which we celebrate joy, in which we rejoice. We will light the third candle, the pink candle. It's Gaudete Sunday, which means with all that's going on. And I want to take a moment and say right at the beginning, I know this season, everybody's told you have to rejoice and be merry, but it's a sad season for some and a hard season for some. Nevertheless, we can take a moment and do what the song, what the poet said, and take joy, seize a bit of joy in the midst of all that is going on, all that's busy in our lives. Speaking of busyness, we have a lot going on today. We have the children's pageant. We have a welcome of new members. We have a baptism and a TV pilot, which you'll see more about later on. I don't know if that's ever been done in the history of church before. Because of that, I decided, as most Sundays when there is a pageant or a cantata, not, I'm going, not going to be preaching a traditional sermon, so I encourage you to make room for all those other wonderful things that are going to be happening. So I encourage you to listen for the Word of God. Listen for the good news as it comes to you from the lips of babes, from the musicians, through all that we do in this spirit of peace and Advent that is coming together at this time. Would you pray with me? God, we ask that you gather us in. We know that your son Jesus, O oh God, said that he longed to gather his children in like, like little chicks under the wings of a hen. So we feel the spirit of God gathering us in today, blessing all that we do, strengthening us to lift the good word to you, to lift the good news to you, and to go forth from here strengthened to spread the good news of the kingdom and the birth of Jesus. In your loving name we pray. Amen. You got one more piece. 
Today is Godless Sunday, the Sunday of joy. May this rose-colored candle remind us to rejoice, to be encouraged, and to exult in the coming of our Lord. invocation. God of Mary, Mother of Jesus, and all of the lowly who seek to be lifted. God of Isaiah, who felt the Spirit upon him, calling him to bring good news. Let your Spirit fall upon us in this hour. Out of the ruins, praise of the everlasting covenant. Anoint us as we seek to share and experience your good news. I am the broken hearts. Awaken us to the liberation within and among us. Embolden us to proclaim your favor as we seek you more deeply. We pray. Amen. Before we say the prayer of transformation and new life, I don't know if anyone in here needs to avail themselves of the service, but our... Um, Nursery attendant uh, was not unable to come today. She let me know very recently. So if anybody needed to bring someone to a child to the nursery, um, there will not be an attendant there. You're welcome to bring them there, but but uh, there, you would have to stay with them if you wanted to do that. Please pray with me at this time. Oh God, as we sit in the night of Advent in this womb of creation, we confess that we often get caught up and what we do not have, material things we lack, access and privilege we may feel that we need, answers even that escape us in crucial moments. Forgive us, O oh God, for the times when we forgot to remember you. Hold us accountable, O oh God, for the moments when we failed to see you and the blessings of all of our lives and in ages past. Help us reconnect on this Sunday with our joy and our gratitude. Remind us to name our joys, our miracles, our deliverances, our redemptions. One by one, we name them to you, for you are there in all of them. Friends, the good news is that God hears what is named aloud, and later on in the service, we're going to name some of those joys, what is named within and what is yet to be named. Go forth naming your joy, claiming it, and that knowing that the Spirit of God is upon you, and this joy you have, the world did not give it to you, and the world cannot take it away. 
For God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son, so that all who believeth in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Receive at this time the full measure of God's pardon, grace, and love. Amen. Without further ado, I turn the service over to the hands of the very accomplished and capable Lisa Gaddy and all of the children and youth. That way I could test the sound equipment for the kids too. <laughs> um, so I am here um, on behalf of the Sunday School at Pilgrim and we will be performing a slightly different but oh so jolly, um, very merry Minecraft Christmas. I don't know how many of you already know what Minecraft is. I know those who know really know because their kids don't stop talking about it. It is something that is fun. It is something that is very creative. It is actually a video game in, in essence that has developed into a larger franchise, um, including a television show which I based the characters off of for writing the script. Um, and the, the, the Minecraft um, was actually originally used as part of the curriculum to teach chemistry and to teach um, science, uh, computer science. It's been used in schools around the world and um, the kids have been very excited um, to put this together, to learn their lines, to create the costumes, and now we are ready to show you. Okay, I see somebody's coming. Who's that? <laughs> oh, there's an angel coming. What a nice. Christmas table. Oh, the angels are really giving good food for the for the feast. Beautiful angels. Thank you. I think. Somebody else is coming. Someone else is approaching. Yeah. I think maybe Santa's. <laughs> this must be Jesse's house with no gifts. Santa sent me here to get out of this house. Okay. Because I need to, I need to uh, give this gift. Is that, is that food on the table? Or do you, the candles on the mine if we took a few. Oh, I heard them coming. So off scurried Santa's little helper to sit on the side because he had heard someone was coming. And who could it be but Jesse and his friends? 
Hey guys, can you believe that it's Christmas Day? I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this day ever since Thanksgiving. I'm so excited that I want to jump and skip and dance. I've been counting down the days ever since the start of Advent on December 1st. Check out the tree. Isn't it beautiful? And look at all the gifts under it. Santa must have fought our many adventures in the service of good are pretty awesome this year. No, no, not yet, Axel. Patience. We'll make this even more fun. How about we have some breakfast together? First, it looks as if someone already set the table for us. I wonder who. Check it out. Ooh, look, there's some eggs and bacon. Oh my gosh, I am so happy for the Belgian waffles with whipped cream and plenty of strawberries on top. Oh, hurry up, let's get seated. I will say grace for us. Can you believe the size of that ender dragon we just slayed, Petra? That was awesome! It truly... It truly was awesome, but let's not do that. That is that anytime soon. That was super scary. Let's instead check out that Christmas tree. Ooh, and it looks like it's breakfast is served. Because, which is that? Great, because I'm starving. Hey, Jesse, it's good to see you guys. We were away fighting Ender Dragon, so I didn't think we would be home in time for Christmas. I know you asked for an answer to your Christmas breakfast in invitation by yesterday, but it's okay if we join you. Of course that's okay. I'm so glad you could make it. The more the Mario is my motto and especially so during this season when we have so much goodness and yumminess to share. Yeah, for sure. Just hold on a second. I'll build us a table extension and some chairs. I'll help you, Axel. Teamwork makes everything easier. Ho, 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 friends, who would have thought we would be here for this wonderful, magical morning? Not me, that's for sure. Just two hours ago, we were... Stuck in the worm quackmire of doom, and we were running out of choices. It got stolen. He had 
received when we freed the people of Scotland from the tempest. It was in his pocket the whole time. Wow, it sounds as if you guys have been through quite an ordeal. Come join us. Are you sure we would want to impact? But I am really hungry. As they say, build a longer table, not a higher fence. Besides, we have so much food here that no matter how much we eat, there always seems to be a new dish. Seriously, everyone, I feel like I've eaten at least five waffles already, and still when I look at the stack, there are just as many left. Stop that! Ivor and Soren, it's not that time yet. Come over here and sit with us and let's share a meal. But first, we are going to need to build yet another addition to our table. Okay, now let's settle down, everyone. Before we go and open the gifts, let's read the story about our Savior's birth. Olivia, here's the Bible. Could you do the honor of reading the first page and then pass it along? Sure. Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel Gabriel told Joseph to take Mary as his wife. Time came for the baby to be born, and Mary gave birth to a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger. As God instructed, Joseph named the child Jesus. There were shepherds living out in the field nearby. Hi, an angel of the Lord appeared to them as the glory of the Lord shone around them. The angel of the Lord said, Do not be afraid. I bring good news. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. To you, he is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign. To you, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. The angel left and returned to heaven. The shepherds were in awe, saying, Could it be that miracle happened, Maria has come. We must give praise. The, the shepherds spread the word <laughs> concerning what they have been told about the children. All who heard it were, were amazed at where the shepherd said to them, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hmm. I think it would be nice to do one more thing before we go and open those presents. Guys, did you know that we have something here called an audience? <laughs> right here in front of us. I think we should end by singing them a song. Oh, oh but let's first invite the angels and Santa's helper to come and join us. So we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Minecraft Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Minecraft New Year. gonna sing the Minecraft version one more time before we leave. Thank you. Thank you. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now bring us a thinky pudding. Now bring us a thinky pudding. Now bring us a thinky pudding and bring it out here. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a merry Christmas and a happy new year. For we all like thinky pudding. For we all like thinky pudding. For we all like thinky pudding. So bring it out here, good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we won't go until we got some, and we won't go until we got some, and we won't go until we got some. So bring it out here, good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And everybody please sing along for We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Minecraft Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Proud New Year. Woo! are on our way to go celebrate because everybody did an awesome, awesome job. Actually, I wonder if we need more. This was a wonderful production. And, you know, a church that has children and parents who help those children express themselves is really a church that is blessed. So let us give thanks. As I want to just give a brief shout out for the Minecraft Bible, which the Sunday School has been working with since over the summer. It is basically the Bible, but illustrated with Minecraft illustrations. I will have it in the fellowship hall after if anybody, any one of y'all would like to take a look. Thank you. Perhaps we should be reading from that today. <laughs> 
but instead we will be hearing God's word through the prophet Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. And they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastation of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being will exalt in my God. For God has clothed me with garments of salvation. God has covered me with the robe of righteousness as the bridegroom decks himself with garland and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of God for the people of God. Something I learned early on as a preacher is if you're another preacher and a preacher gives a good sermon, sometimes the instinct is to get up there and elaborate on what they said or to try to add something on. But as Libby said, there's really not a whole lot we can add on to what the kids already did from the mouth of babes. Let's just, let's just I know they're already in the back, but let's give them a big round of applause. And thank you very much to all the volunteers who made such a wonderful production possible. I will just say, more than anything, it's such a blessing to see kids and young people in front in church with joy and excitement. I don't think there's anything else that I could ask for as a pastor. The word of the, the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, verses, and verses 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all who might believe so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, "Who are you?" He confessed and did not deny it. But he confessed, "I am not the Messiah." And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. 
Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom, I do, whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the word of God for the people of God. In place of the traditional sermon this morning, I'm going to take a brief moment and invite us all to participate in a sacred ritual of joy and gratitude because we have lit the third candle. It is Gaudete Sunday. And as we gather together in the season of Advent, anticipating hope, praying for peace, and attempting to cultivate joy and share love amidst commotion, grief, despair, and uncertainty, it is crucial that we do what I said at the beginning and take and name our joy. So I want to take a moment and ask each of us to reflect on what has brought us joy this week. Or if you could frame it a different way, what are you grateful for this morning? And I invite you to speak that joy, to name it, either in your heart or if you feel like naming it out loud, kind of like we do the prayers of the people, you name it out loud, I will affirm it, and then we're all going to respond and we're going to say, our spirits rejoice. So I will begin, I'll begin to give an example. Uh, this morning, Manu was the first one in church with me and he went back behind the ship over there and he was the first person on the deck of the good stewardship. And that gave me joy this morning. So can you respond with me? Our spirits rejoice. What are you rejoicing for this morning? What is giving you joy this morning or this week? Yes, Pramila. Good morning, all. Um, my it's okay, I'll say. Uh, months and very delayed developmentally. She is poised to graduate from the University of Toronto with high distinction. I am so joyful for that. Thank you. For Pavitra, right? Yes. Our spirits rejoice. Yes, Robin. Um, the other day, they reinstalled the bell in my church at home. It's 128 years old, and they rang it for the first time on Friday. And it makes me cry. What is it? First Congregational Church in Emmanuel Oxford? Emmanuel Congregational United Church of Christ in Oxford, Michigan. Sorry. And um, I grew up there. My family all got married there. They, my dad rang the bell. I got pulled by the bell rope many times as a kid. And they redid the bell tower and... Um, just put the bell back in this week and played it on Friday. I heard it on Facebook. It made me happy. It made me cry. For the bell in Emmanuel Congregational Church in Oxford, our spirits rejoice. Yes, Dee Dee. Just staying young at heart and being able to see my through my grandchildren's eyes, you know, um, the love of God, the light. I mean, we were talking about it this weekend. They spent the whole weekend with us. And just to see everything unfold through their eyes has just been beautiful. And my husband and I feel very blessed to have our grandchildren. For Didi's and Ron's grandchildren, our spirits rejoice. Yes, Laura Jean? I would like to announce that Christmas is going to be different without my brother. And the life in this whole planet... It's just one of these things that you have to be able to deal with death. Well, in honor of my late sister-in-law, please, I want life to be the fullest for me because my brother is not able to have a life. Amen. Amen. Our spirits rejoice. You can do one more if there is one more out there. 
Yes, Carla. Just say well, it right there into the microphone. I am so blessed to, to be a new, plan to be a very new member today. I'm grateful to be a member of. For Carla, our spirits rejoice. The practice of naming our joys, of counting our blessings, naming them one by one, as the hymn says, can sustain us as we await for the consummation of our perfect joy, which is in Jesus. So when the days get bleak and the weight of the world falls heavy upon your shoulders, remember God. Put God back together. Remember God by remembering what God has done and what God still can do in us and through us and by us and for us. Let us pray and give thanks and let the church say, Amen. And with that, in that spirit of thanksgiving and particularly reflecting Carla's uh, joy, we're going to invite, I want to invite all those who wish to join the church by affirming their baptism or by being baptized to come forward at this time. I'm going to put this chair right here for you, Carla. Right there. Yes. I, yes, we need the book, but we're going to do it at the end of service. I don't think so. Okay, I want to have Carla come right here, please, okay. to the chair. Step up. Mm -hmm. We'll put it down. We'll put it right there. Thank you very much. Right, right here, right over here. And I want to have Devin come right over here. And then everyone else, please come up on the stage. Bill, don't light yourself on fire. <laughs> Becky, come right next to Devin, please. Okay. If we don't have enough room on the stage, man, that's a blessing, isn't it? We're going to have you trade places with Devin, okay? okay? Are we all here? Are we missing anybody? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we're all here. Wonderful. Friends, these friends of ours have found nurture and support in the midst of this family of Christ here at Pilgrim Church. Through prayer and study, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to be baptized and affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. My friends, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows in a holy temple in Christ, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Devin, Becky, Bill, Keisha, David, Drew, and Carla, do you either, affirm, either desire to affirm your baptism or be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire to receive the freedom of new life in Christ? I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? I promise with the help of God. Either one works. <laughs> Do you promise according to the grace given you to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence by furthering Christ's mission in all the world? I promise with the help of God. Let us all stand and affirm our faith as we are comfortable. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Okay. Now the service of baptism. Step just for a little bit right there. Okay. Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in the one baptized this day, that he may rise in Christ. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and shall always be, world 
without end. Devin, I baptize you in the name of the Creator and of the Christ and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit be upon you, Devin, child of God, disciple of Christ, and member of Pilgrim Church. The whole church should say amen. 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 Friends, by your baptism, you are made one with all of us in the body of Christ, the church. Today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, your journey which has brought you to this time and place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home, and we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Now a question about participation. Friends, do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? Promise with the help of God. Now they're getting it. <laughs> and so please stand again as you are comfortable. May we, the members of Pilgrim Church, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. Let's say together the words you find in your bulletin. We welcome, we welcome you, you with, with joy in the, the common life of this church. church. We, we promise you our friendship and prayers as we, we share the hopes, hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. Christ. By the by power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit may we continue, continue to grow together, together in God's, God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. I believe that the moderator of the church is off with the kids. Is that right? Do I have any members of the, the council, either the officers or members of the council, wish to come forward at this time and help me in extending the right hand of Christian Fellowship? Please come forward at this time. Lee will come. Stephanie will come. Roberta will come. Rick and Chris. The right hand of Christian Fellowship is just a fancy way of saying we're going to give you a hug, but only if you want it. <laughs> the default in many in this church is just to give the hug so if you would prefer the handshake just say I prefer the handshake so in the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of Pilgrim Church we extend to you dear friends we, we, the, the right hand of Christian fellowship and we welcome you into the company of this local church of Pilgrim, Pilgrim Church let us give them a big round of applause Here though, so don't forget. Don't forget Carla. Okay. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this local church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together, may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in the life and worship of this church and, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's give our new members a round of applause. That's an excellent talent, right? That's some skill right there. To the members, we 
let no one for let no one be mistaken we will we need all the members who just joined at the end of service to come back up we need to have you sign the book but if we did that right now it might take another five ten minutes but don't go anywhere please come back up and we'll have you sign the book of the registry of membership here in the church Without further ado, I introduce to you the Pilgrim Church Stewardship Team. Following the uh, very merry Minecraft Christmas, and after a few other messages, if you have not changed your dial on the television, we welcome you to the pilot production of Pilgrim Church's new stewardship game show, Dictionary Dare. Now, this being a pilot show, uh, we need to make sure that all of our contestants are present before we proceed. And I did not have a chance, as the host of the show, to check in with Ebony before uh, worship started. So I just need to be sure if Ebony is with us. Ebony? Not here. So this is a pilot production. <laughs> and we will proceed. Let's meet our contestants, randomly selected from the audience. <laughs> Jay Friendly Fuller, come on down. Barbara Eloquent Elrod. Come on down. <laughs> Folks, because this is the pilot production of Dictionary Dare, the UCC Television Network <laughs> has required the attendance of its most senior observer. <laughs> In case a contestant says anything inconsistent, with the UCC policies. <laughs> Please welcome Miles Smiley Sped. <laughs> As a reminder, here are the rules of Dictionary Dare. I will randomly select two word phrases from the dictionary. Each contestant will give a personal response to each phrase in 25 words or less. If a response exceeds 25 words, the gong will sound like this. Oh, here is the first two-word phrase randomly suggested, uh, uh, randomly found in the dictionary. Stewardship. Barbara, your personal thoughts. Eloquent Barbara Elrod. Stewardship. Microphone? Uh, this is a pilot program. <laughs> we need the microphone up here, Penny. Do you have more to say, Barbara? Yes, I do. That is stewardship. S-H-I-P, not S-H-I-T. <laughs> we are all in this ship together. 
young and old, happy, unhappy, smart, forgetful, inexperienced, experienced. Um, we are here in our little place in the world, Pilgrim Church. It's not Noah's Ark, Pilgrim Church. I'm reluctant to go on. <laughs> but thank you, Barbara Eloquent Elrod. And uh, Jay, friendly, fuller, do you have a response? Well, let's see. Um, well, a steward is somebody who takes care of patrons of an institution or perhaps passengers on a ship. So a stewardship would be a ship that carries stewards. But my question to you, Jeff, is does the stewardship have stewards that are not passengers? So now I've been trying to follow a script. <laughs> I think you have your answer. And we knew there were going to be some surprises. Well, thank you both. Oh, here is the second randomly selected two-word phrase from the dictionary. I'll be forgotten. Church pledge. I have a little comment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have about uh, 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 50, 50, just 15 minutes. You'll, and... you'll follow the script, please, sir. The second randomly selected phrase is church pledge. Uh, Jay, friendly, fuller, first. Oh, I have two brief definitions or meanings of church pledge. Um, I think it could be um, a cleaning solution made by S.C. E. Johnson Wax that's used <laughs> to clean a church. Mm -hmm. um, but it could also be an oath or a promise that is made to a um, political body, um, an assembly in which one belongs. And which seminary did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let's hear it for that uh, response. Barbara, eloquent Elrod, you must have more to say. I do. In our little place in this world, it's dollars. Dollars. Um, we are all in this together. And whatever we give, if it's $1, $10, $100, $1,000, $10, $10,000, or a $1 million, um, we are in this together. And... Um, my, how about every single one of us, a hundred percent of us make a pledge to Pilgrim Church, our little place in the world. Well, applause for that. Uh, is there any observation that, uh, the network observer would like to make? Um. Yes, I would. I would like to make some suggestions. Well, you go right ahead, sir. Please. Please, what? Go right ahead. Now I can make talk without being... Yes, we have just a brief few seconds left. Okay. Now, the, the first thing I want to say is that Barbara and Jay, I thought, did a wonderful job. <laughs> and I think they both should be co-winners of this contest. And uh -huh. I have to admit that I was a little skeptical in the beginning, 
with the idea of this program, but now I'm so excited about it that I will make a contribution to the Pilgrim Stewardship Fund. S H I P. I prefer that. Thank you for and clarifying, you Barbara. Too, and it will give you the warm feeling that you get when you give something from and to two others. Thank you, Sue. Smiley. Smiley Miles, our observer from the UCC network. And that, folks, concludes the pilot production of Pilgrim Church's Dictionary Dare. But remember, stewardship at Pilgrim Church is about being eloquent and being friendly and being smiley. Uh, just uh, as a, as a follow-up to last week, um, I don't have one here, so I can't be Vanna White again, but we do have mugs for everyone who, who pledges. So every family Almost unit who pledges, pledges um, we will get, you will have a mug. Uh, we are hoping for, uh, we have a goal of 55 pledging units. Rounds. We're at almost 35, so uh, keep them coming. <laughs> and the pledge cards are available in the narthex. Yes. By the show. <laughs> Thank you all. nothing else needs to be said except that we are so richly blessed. May we seek to be a blessing to others as we receive our morning offering. <laughs> sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Amen. Amen.
Yeah, cut the last one for sure. Yeah. What prayers do you have to offer this morning? Yes, Jackie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I asked for prayers for Ronnie Stewart. His twin brother was skated in the ice show with me 45 years ago, and he happens to live here, so I see them a lot. And um, he had a stroke. He's in the hospital. They're finding other issues, too. So I asked that... Uh, Ronnie Stewart, be in our prayers. Thank you. God, in your mercy. Uh, before, I'm sorry, Heather, before we go forward, I, I did want to, uh, us to begin praying today for the Anderson family, the fa family of Reverend Steve Anderson. Uh, many of you probably, some of you probably heard already. Many of you probably have met at some point Devin Anderson, Steve and Jane's granddaughter, who was, I believe, 21 years old. Tragically, last Tuesday, um, died by suicide. And I know that is a very, very hard thing to hear, so I, I hold everybody here in my prayers. Reverend Steve has asked that the church uh, pray for, for Devin, for him, for Jane, for Marion, for um, Caleb, and for all those friends. And there are many here who, I think, look at Devin like another granddaughter or daughter, and like the Andersons, like family. So we pray for one another as well and continue to offer uh, expressions of solidarity and support and love to that family as we are able. God, in your mercy. Heather. Well, now I'm like really, really upset. Um, it's so tragic. Um, I asked for prayers for me. Um, I had a procedure done on my eye last week. Um, I've been having a lot of problems with my eye for like a year and a half. And this was kind of a, a last deal, Hail Mary type of thing to sort of heal my eye. Um, and so I just, I just, it's, there's this film that they put on top of my eye that'll be removed on Monday. Um, so just prayers that it, hopefully it helps. Thanks. For your eye and for healing, God in your mercy. Laura Jean. Can you get the mic? There you have it. Uh, ladies, oh, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a sad, this was a sad day on November 26th after my birthday. My sister-in-law passed away from complications of Crohn's disease. And my brother is not having a good Christmas because of, of what has happened. So I want you to pray for me. I'm a survivor in the family. And I want you to pray for Barbara Alrod, who's done such a great, excellent job. Let's give her a hand. And we pray for all the loved ones in um, Almas, and we pray for all the family, the hostages in Israel. In Jesus' name we pray. We got in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Uh, Nancy, and then Betsy, and then Becky. Um, I have a prayer of praise. Last week I asked you to please pray for my our daughters father-in-law who is in Fairfax Hospital on a ventilator being treated for COVID. And I just want to thank you for your prayers. He's out of the hospital. He's home recovering. It's going to be a long recovery, but he's going to make it. So thank you for your prayers. We give thanks. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Betsy. Uh, asking for prayers for our friend Olga. She recently lost her father who was in Belarus her best friend who was in Poland and her 10-year-old son, uh, Dominic, was hospitalized with uh, pneumonia and he's also a heart transplant survivor. So she's just bearing up more than one person I've worshipped. So asking for prayers for her. For all of those people we pray, God in your mercy. For, for uh, we'll do Becky and then, well, Chris and then Becky and then Jay. 
Uh, we have a, a couple of celebrations. Gref, uh, Jeff's granddaughters, uh, first one, Danasia, will deliver her second child by C-section on Wednesday. And we just came back from Atlanta where his granddaughter, Madeline, graduated with high honors from Georgia Tech in civil engineering. We pray for both things that the C-section go well, and we give thanks for such a wonderful celebration. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Becky? Hi, I have good news. Um, I asked you to pray for my sister a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Chris had uh, knee replacement surgery a week ago Tuesday, and she's doing really well. And I was really nervous about being a caregiver, but that worked out too. So um, the other thing is that I have a very dear friend who is turning 95 today. His name is Don. He is, um, he's been my mentor. I'm a birder and he's been doing, he's been a birder for wait, a long time. Anyway, thank you. I'm very grateful for the support of, of this community. I believe we've prayed for Don before. So we give thanks and we give thanks for your sister as well. God in your mercy. Uh, Barbara. I, I just wanted to ask um, for prayers for my son, my friend that you, some people may know her, Nancy Riches. Um, she's, she's spending Christmas um, at the Hebrew home and not with either her son or her daughter, um, just the, the friends that she's made there. So just prayers for Nancy. For Nancy. God in your mercy. And we're going to make Jay and then Courtney will be the very last because we're a little bit over time. So Jay, go ahead. Oh. Dean and then Jay and then, and then Courtney, and then I'm going to have to cut it off. I, I just ask for prayers um, for my husband, George, um, who is uh, on a plane as we speak heading to Rhode Island. The, his last uncle, the youngest of his mother's siblings, died this week, and uh, George is delivering the eulogy at the funeral tomorrow. Pray for George and the whole family. God in your mercy. Yeah, and Dean, we continue to pray for you, and we're here for you. Each week when I come to church, I get a text from Betty Cornegy, and this, she wants to make sure I'm here. And <laughs> the Reverend Scarf is straight. And she said, on behalf of her and Wade, she wishes Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas is Betty. God in your mercy. She's and Courtney. Online. Betty's online. Good morning. Um, I, I would like you all to pray for every parent who at this point in December may be panicking about what they're going to do for Christmas for their kids. Please pray for them. It's a very stressful, stressful moment. And so a moment also of, of celebration that I am now and I'm in a place where I don't worry. I'm, I'm done. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but also pay, pray for those parents in particular. I would like you all to remember uh, we are now in the tens of thousands of Palestinians killed, civilians killed in Palestine. Uh, Jesus was born in Palestine. He would have been a Palestinian Christian. Um, so at this moment, I would like you to please keep those people in prayer, in particular, the mothers who um, have lost children and they have, they're in a state of psychosis and they are neglecting the other children. Please pray for those children who now have to take care of themselves for moments because their mothers, uh, they lost their parents or their mothers just really aren't there. Right. Please, a special prayer for them. Thank, Thank you. you. We pray for all the lost lives in Palestine and an end to what unfortunately is, we have to call it what it is, a genocide that is going on. We pray for an end as soon as possible. God, in your mercy. Your Penny, on Zoom. From Joy Saxon on Zoom, I would like to ask for prayers for my college classmate, Twinetta, who lost her husband of Michael three years yesterday morning. For Twina and that loss, the ongoing grief. God, in your mercy. To you, O oh God, we commend all those for whom we have prayed, trusting in your eternal mercy, love, and grace. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do we have any first-time visitors with us today? Any first-time visitors who would like, if you wish, no pressure, but if you'd like to stand up and introduce yourself, you're welcome to do so at this time. There is a cake for the new members. Let's join in the fellowship hour uh, and welcoming there. And I invite all the new members to please go over there and take a photo before the cake is cut into. Christmas Eve is a week from today. Do not come to church at 11 in the, 10.30 in the morning next Sunday. There is service in the evening, 6 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. There is a fellowship hour in between. So uh, if you wish to attend, please do attend from 7 to 8 p.m., a holiday Christmas Eve fellowship hour. That's a wonderful occasion to, to come together. So I will hope to see as many of you as possible here in church next Sunday, December 24th, on Christmas Eve. I am not going to read the rest of the announcements that are in here. And if there is any burning announcement that needs to be made from the floor, please make it at this time. Seeing none, let us rise in body and spirit as we are comfortable. We're going to sing our closing hymn, but we're not going to sing the last verse. We're going to sing all the way down to the love of Jesus down in my heart, and then we're going to end it. So let us sing. Our closing hymn, I've got the joy, 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 joy. Joy, 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 down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart, I've got the joy, joy. this blessing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Do not be anxious. I stress that at this time. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made to known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let us go in peace and let the church say, Amen. Amen.